Good morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Please stand as we give God glory, praise, and honor. And we're going to welcome the Holy Spirit. Let's go.
church those that are tuned in to our social media media platform you are welcome and we thank you for joining in with us Amen. I'll be reading from Psalms 96 1 through 9 oh sing unto the Lord a new song sing unto the Lord all the earth sing unto the Lord bless his name show forth his salvation from day to day declare his glory among the heathen his wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of all nations are idle. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of all people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear him, all the earth. Amen. Amen. Dear precious Heavenly Father, the one who lives high and looks low, we come before you this morning, Lord God, as humbly as we know how, to say thank you for this day. Thank you for once again you have lifted, uh, lifted our eyes and raised us up and showered us with the blessings of good health and strength, allowing us to be the part of the blessed and spirit-filled miracle of another day, a day that only you and you alone has made possible, Lord God. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for thy glory and grace, for it is truly personified, Lord God. Your goodness and mercy is second to none, Lord God. For you are my heavenly Father. You walk it like you talk it, Lord God. And I am so thankful that you are there to look out for us, yes, to bless Lord. us, to yes, lead us, Lord. to guide us. Dear Lord, we thank you for all that you do, yes, all that Lord. you've done, and all that you've yet to do. Yes, Lord. Lord God, I am so thankful that you are my heavenly Father, Lord God. That once again, Lord God, you allowed us to come together for prayer, preaching, and fellowship, dear yes, Lord God. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Thank Lord God, I know that in your hands rest all the power and all the might and all there is to make great and to give strength to us all, Lord God. Thank you, oh, Heavenly Father, for you are the one and the only true and living God, and we put no other God before thee. For you are our, our leader, our protector, our surgeon, our teacher. You are all that it is all, Lord God, and I am so thankful to you. Lord God, you have brought us all a mighty long way. Continue to take us the rest of the way, Lord God. Carry us through it and deliver us to it. In the blessed name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, I thank thee. Now, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, my soul will sing. Sing hallelujah. Oh, my soul.
song says, oh, oh, I really love you, Lord. That's the English version of it. And then we're going to sing a Spanish version of it. Oh, oh, I really love you, Lord.
every time I turn around, God is good to me. And every time I look around, God is good to me. And every time I open my eyes, God is good to me. And every time I move my feet. Has he been there for you? 
God is good. I say God is good. He is. He is good. I tell you, God is just so good. He has, he has blessed us one more again. Thank you, choir. Thank you for reminding us that God is, God is good. God is good. Thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. We serve the awesome and the amazing and God. He has blessed us one more again. I tell you, he has, God has done it again. We woke up this morning and we realized that we didn't do it. The alarm clock didn't do it. God has done it again. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God for who he is and what he's already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. Let me call your attention to the book of Revelation, chapter 4, in the New Testament, the last book in your Bible. Revelation, one revelation. Revelation, chapter 4, verses 8 through 11. Revelation, chapter 4. Verses 8 through 11. As we prepare to move forward in our Sunday school classes to the book of Revelation, we are doing our Bible reading, our Bible journaling, our Bible listening through the book of Revelation. Uh, my text said we will end up on August the 7th, but really it's August the 13th. We will cover Revelation two times, starting... On July the 29th, we started three chapters a day, Bible listening and journaling. And we will stop after our, seven, our second time of going through the book of Revelation, our Bible listening. We will stop on August 13th. Revelation chapter 4, beginning at verse number 8, ending at verse number 11. When you found it, you will discover these words. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sit on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. And cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. I want to talk about God is worthy. God is worthy. And many times we look at the world in which we live when we find ourselves Wondering who is, who's worthy. The late Arthur Ashe was worthy of being crowned the goat when it came to tennis. Now we look at Serena Williams and we look at Coco coming up behind her and we wonder which will really be worthy at the end of the day to be called the greatest of all times. We look at Kobe, we look at Michael Jordan, we look at LeBron James, and we wonder who will be called the greatest of all time, who will be worthy. We look at Walter Payton, we look at Aaron Rodgers, we, we look at Tom Brady, and some of us have already come to the conclusion that Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback to ever live, then we come to the conclusion that he is worthy to be called the greatest of all times. When you look at your big mama and my big mama, 
your big daddy, my big daddy. Now, when I grew up, big daddy meant something different from what it means now. When you look at those who were matriarchs and patriarchs in your family, there's no doubt in my mind you've come to the conclusion I have the greatest grandparents, the greatest great-grandparents of all time. When we look at the text today, the author, John, on the island of Patmos, leaves no stone unturned, and he points us to the fact that God Almighty, God the Creator, is worthy. Yes, he's worthy. He's, there's no other God like him. There will never be any God before us like him. There will never be a God who competes to him. Everybody has to eventually bow down to this great God, for he is worthy. In chapter 1 of Revelation, uh, the, the apostle John is exiled on an island called Patmos, a little strip of land about 10 miles long and 8 miles wide, an island called Patmos. I've said to you before, there was no churching going on on that island. There were no pews, there, was no, there were no cushioned chairs, there was no carpet floors. It was just a place where bramble bushes exist. And, 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 and John did not have on that island any piano player or any organ player. He said, but he was in the spirit of the Lord on the Lord's day. It says to us today, we can't wait on the instruments to get us in the spirit. We can't wait on the choir to sing us in the spirit. John says out on a lonely island, he was exiled for the testimony of Jesus Christ, for the word of God. He had been pushed aside and exiled and in prison on this lonely small island, but he had the audacity to say, I was in the spirit of the Lord on the Lord's day. It says, it says to us today, it says to us today, you don't have to have everything you need to be in the spirit of God. It says to us today that things may not be going smoothly like you want them to go, but you ought to find yourself in the spirit of God. It says to us today that regardless of what circumstances, what situation you are placed in, you need to understand that God is worthy of all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. John says that he was in the spirit of the Lord and he heard behind him a great voice like the voice of a great trumpet. He says, John, what you hear, John, what you see, write it and put it in a book. And when you put it in the book, understand one thing, John, I'm Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. I am Jesus the Christ. There's none before me. There would be none after me. Let me tell you, we serve a great God. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. He says, what you hear, what you see, write it and put it in a book. And then he says, in chapter 1, he says, send it to the churches of Asia Minor. John saw the person of the voice. He, he fell down before him. Jesus says to him, be not afraid. He says that I once was dead and now I am alive again. He told him that now I live forever. When we move to chapters three, two chapters two and three, when we move to chapters two and three, Jesus tells John to write to the churches, the seven churches of Asia Minor, and he says to them, first of all, I want to affirm them. He speaks affirmation to them. He credits them for what they have done and what they have achieved and how they carried themselves. He blesses them. He praises them. And then he disciplines them. Yeah, he says to them that, that you, you have done a great work. You're doing a great thing. But then he says, I rebuke you. He deals with them according to their works. He deals with them according to their labor. He deals with them according to their patience or lack of patience. He even deals with them according to their tolerance for evil. He deals with them according to their perseverance. And then finally, he deals with them according to their repentance. Jesus says to us this morning, whatever we caught up in, Whatever we are going through, whatever we are, we are dancing around, whatever we are fooling ourselves with, it's time to repent. Right. So he deals with these seven churches. He tells them it's time to repent. And then it leads us to chapter 4, 
where a door opens in heaven. Let me tell you, a, a door opens in heaven. And, and I wonder today is when what John saw in heaven is what God see at the New Beginning Church. When I look at the text and it says a door opens in heaven and the voices invites John to come hither, come closer, come on up here to heaven. I wonder does John see, I wonder does Jesus see, I wonder does God see the same thing in our local churches today. Are we coming just to see who's with who? Are we showing up just to see who will what? Are we showing up just to see how people will respond? Are we here because we came to hear from God? Yeah, we ought to come to church. We ought to, we ought to tune in to hear from God. Man will let you down. I want to tell you the secret. I know it's a secret. Man will let you down because man is flawed and, and man has no cause by which he's going to live from one day to the other because he'll tell you something one day and he'll tell you something differently the next day. I wonder, does God see in our local churches just what John sees on the Isle of Patmos? John doesn't throw a pity party. He doesn't talk about, I'm out here for the wrong reason. He doesn't say that I'm here and I don't deserve to be here. He doesn't even call his friends and throw a pity party. He didn't text them. He didn't special deliver anything to them. He just sat there and he was in the spirit of the Lord. He listened to a voice that he had not heard. It says to us today, stop throwing pity parties says to us today that we are not exiled yet. We, we, are, we are not set apart. We, we are not pushed off for something we did wrong, nor for something we did right. I want to stop and tell you today that you don't have to do any wrong in order for folk to mess over you. You, you, you know, used, it used to be, it used to be when we, when we got in trouble, we would go home and mama would ask the question, what did you do? Let me just serve notice on you today that you don't have to do anything wrong to be locked up in a jail. You don't have to do anything wrong to be pulled over for any reason. Matter of fact, you can get caught driving while Hispanic, driving while black, and you'll be pulled over right there on the spot. You don't have to say anything wrong. You don't have to have the wrong mannerism. You don't have to do anything wrong. What you need to do and what you need to know that people will let you down and people will do you wrong even when you're doing the right thing. John says, I'm on an island called Patmos and I'm here for the work of the Lord. I'm here for the will of the Lord. I'm here for the, wor the word of the Lord. And I, I testified of Jesus and that's why I'm here. Have you ever been persecuted because you've been, been right? Have you ever been persecuted because you stood for the Lord? Have you ever been persecuted because life uh, was, was holding you back and you decided to get up and praise the Lord in the middle of it? Let me tell you, the best time to praise him is when you're down and out. I'm telling you, if you want to be blessed of the Lord, just find a way to praise him in the midst of your troubles, in the midst of your trials. When things are not going right, you know how to spend some time praising him. You ought to praise him. You ought to honor him. You ought to worship him. You ought to lift him. You ought to stand for him and stand with him. You ought to praise the God that we serve simply because he is God. You see, some people can't praise him unless they got something from God. Some people can't praise him unless God is doing them a big favor. Some people don't praise him unless they got the billion on this weekend. Let me just share with you, when you don't have a dime in your pocket and other folk are making millions and billions, you need to lift your hands and honor him and praise him, worship him because he's God. Thank him for who he is and who he's going to always be. It says that we are worshiping the God who is the God who was, and the God who will always be. We worship him. We praise him. If somebody would just praise him, maybe you'll get what you've been praying for. If you just turn, you just lose yourself one day. Whether it's in the service or, or driving down the street, you ought to lose yourself one day and honor the God we serve. If you praise him, he, re he responds. First chapter, chapter 4 says, heaven doors open. And this voice invites John up to heaven by saying, come up here so you can see. John reminds us again in chapter 4, just like he reminded us in chapter 1, that he was in the spirit of the Lord on the Lord's day. It says to us this morning, it says to us this morning that you need to be in the spirit of the Lord. 
regardless of what you're going through. You need to be caught up in the spirit. You see, some people stop by Rawlings and pick up their spirits. Some people talk, stop by JB's and pick up their spirits. But let me just share with you, when you find yourself in the spirit of the Lord, the Lord can bless you real good, a heap in a plenty. We need to understand that we need to be in the spirit of the Lord. Not in our spirit, but in God's spirit. The spirit of the Lord. He didn't say the spirit of the Lord was upon me. He said that he was in the spirit. I just want to serve notice on you today. The spirit don't hit you. The spirit doesn't hit you. The spirit that somebody said, well, girl, I got hit by the spirit and I, I really, no, the spirit doesn't hit you. The spirit comes in and Brother Miles explained it real well this morning in Sunday school. When you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, let me tell you what happened. The spirit of God comes in also. And when he comes in, he walks with you. He talks with you. He tells you that you are his own. The spirit of the Lord is within us and he's walking and he's living and he's alive in us. The spirit of the Lord. You see, God comes in. And when God comes in, he comes in and he begins to talk to us. He begins to tell us who we are in him. Therefore, no Christian, no Christian, no born-again believer ought to have a bad attitude, nor should we have a low self-esteem because we got the greatest person of all time, the Holy Spirit, living within us. Forget about that joker that told you you ain't going to make it without me. Well, if he's not the spirit, if she's not the spirit, then you need to stick with the spirit. All right. Brother told me one time, he said, if your ministry going to ever go anywhere, you need to hang out with this pastor and you need to make this, make sure that this pastor gets you where you want to, to be and where you want to go. And I said, if my God is such a small God that I can't exist without this pastor, I can't be motivated with this pastor, then I'm serving the wrong God. And let me tell you, I understand this morning that the God I serve is bigger than any man. He has more influence than any man. He takes us where we need to be when we need to be there says, come up here. And John saw a throne. The text declares that John saw a throne. This throne represents honor. This throne represents authority. This throne represents the man in charge or the being in charge. God is sitting on the throne. He says, come up here. He saw a throne. It says, the one who sat on the throne was as Jasper and Sardius stone. Jasper means it's a gem that reflects various colors and is symbolic to the glory of God. Sandidius throne is a reddish colored gem, and that, that gem lets off much light. These gems are very bright. These gems are what we look like. Whenever a person said they have died and gone and they saw and they were ushered back to life, they said they saw a bright light. I, I'd let you know, I want to let you know that everybody that, that died and came back didn't see a bright light. I suggest to you this morning, I, I suggest to you this morning, somebody has somebody else's testimony, and because they have somebody else's testimony, they're going to deliver somebody else's testimony. What is your testimony? We don't have to wait till we die. We don't have to wait till we go and come back. We can receive him right now here today, and we can see him in the spirit of the Lord. On the Lord's, on the Lord's day. Every day is the day of the Lord. On the Lord's day, every day, every day is the day of the Lord. He says that, that he, saw, he saw this person sitting on a throne. He saw, and he says around the throne was the appearance of emeralds. A precious green color was a rainbow. This rainbow reminds us that when God comes back and when God destroys this earth the next time, it won't be water. He told Noah that Noah, just look at it. The rainbow that you see in the sky, it won't be water next time. It's going to be fire. 
I'm saying to you today that God is coming back again, and when he comes back again, you ought to have your stuff in order. And I'm not talking about just your will, and you ought to have your will in order. You ought to, you ought to have your situation in order, and you must know your flocks and herds. I'm telling you, don't, don't just leave things to the child that's the oldest. Don't just leave things to the child that's the youngest. You need to make sure you leave your stuff to the one who got some good sense. The one who's going to be fair with everybody. The one that's going to do what you say do. You need to know your flocks and herds. But when you leave here, turmoil won't break out. You need, you need to have your stuff in order. But the big thing about having your stuff in order, you need to know God. And you need to know him every day. You need to know him in a better way. You need to get to know God so much so that you realize that he has new mercies every day. You thought that because he woke you up yesterday, he was obligated to wake you up this morning. Let me tell you, he got new mercies every day. He's not obligated to wake us up at any time simply because he's God. He's the sovereign God. He does what he wants to do when he wants to do it, the any way he chooses to do it, the way he wants to do it, any time he chooses to do it, with whom he chooses to do it, because he's sovereign. He is the almighty God. The text declares that there were 24 thrones around that throne. And those 24 thrones had 24 elders on them. They were sitting on this throne, and they were clothed in white robes. They, they were clothed with white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. Don't get it messed up now. There was a throne. God sits on this throne, and around God's throne, there were 24 elders sitting on the throne. And as these 24 elders sit on the throne, you, they understood, even though they were dressed in white, even though they had gold crowns on their head, they weren't God. Too often we get to a point in our life where we sit small chairs on this side, small chairs on this side, and the man in the middle got a high chair. Let me just share with you something. He ain't the king. He's not the Lord. He's just the called man to speak the word of God. And sometimes we do ourselves in our congregation great disservice because we think that we ought to be the man and we ought to be it. Let me tell you, there's none in comparison to God. He's God all by himself. So the 24 elders surround the throne of God. They sit there surrounding him. These elders represent the leadership of worshiping, and they were worshiping God. They were giving God praises. They were giving God honor. They were giving God all the glory. They had gold crowns on their head. From the throne proceeded lightning and thundering and voices coming from the throne. Let me tell you, everything go, we go through, it comes from God. If God didn't bring it, God allowed it to happen. And you need to get over what you're going through. Because let me tell you, some things we get over, we throw pity parties about, we need to get over it soon. And some things, it takes a while to get over. But one thing we know, that when we're going through, we're going through. That means that there's something on the other side. There is a brighter day ahead. We used to sing the song back home, there's a brighter day ahead. For God has said, there's a brighter day ahead. Hold your hope. Give God a chance. Wait just for a moment. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. There's a brighter day ahead. Trust God through what you're going through because you're just going through. And all of us have to go through some things. Let me tell you, rain falls on the just as well as the unjust. We got to go through some things. Children crawling up, fools here. We got to go through it. Spouse won't do what, what they need to do. We got to go through it. People walking off and leaving you in the midst of when you need them the most, we have to go through it. Just like it happens to everybody else, it happens to us. Drive-by shooting, an innocent bystander gets killed. Some of these communities, we just have to go through it. And it's just a second away, just a half a second away before something can happen to any of us. You saw it. You saw the preacher standing up on last Sunday while we were in church. They were in church. He's standing up on last Sunday, and his words were, have you ever had a problem where you thought you're going to die? And the moment he said that armed bandits walks in with guns and take off his chain, and then they pat his chest, and they pull the chains off. Then they hold a gun to his eight-month-old baby and take the, the stuff from his woman. Let me just share with you. I'm not, this is it. 
it's worth about $500 at the most. If you want it, you can have it. You don't need a gun. Just walk up here and ask me for it. I'm not going to walk in here with $500,000 worth of chain on my neck. This is it. It doesn't cost half as much as what your stuff costs. You can have it. And, and you don't need a gun to get it. Just walk up and tell me you want it. You can have it. And I, I'm still convinced, I'm still convinced the guy that was sitting on the right side of the preacher, that was sitting there with his Bible draped, uh, draped across his leg, everybody else is hitting the floor. He's sitting there so cool. I'm convinced he got set up. I'm convinced he's the one that set him up. If you notice, if you notice, the ungarment never went to him, never addressed him, never told him to sit down. Let me tell you, there are some folk that have snuck in unaware. And who else would be better to know that he has chains up under his garment? So they begin to pat on his garment. Now, first of all, preacher, I just let you know, everything you got, everybody don't need to know. Everything you got, you don't need to front. Everything you have, you don't need to put it on social media because you become a target. And when you're in a neighborhood that's going to come in like that, I mean, they came in like thieves in the day. The Bible said Jesus is coming in like a thief in the night. They came in like thieves in the day. And this dude sitting back there, I don't know if he was the drummer or the associate minister. He was really cool, calm, and collected. If, if, if the FBI, if, if the city police hadn't noticed that, they need to hire me on as an investigator. Because it's a dead giveaway. It's a dead giveaway if Sister Hughes sit in that corner and everybody else is on the floor. But I, I'm sure I don't have to worry about that. The moment she can see something happen before you see it happen, y'all going to have to mimic her because she's going to become like superwoman. <laughs> we need to understand. <laughs> we, we need to understand that the God we serve, anything can happen to anybody at any given time. But God is just staying the hand of the devil. Let me tell you, we need members of this church that will walk the perimeters of the church, walk the inside of the church, and ask God to stay the hand of the devil. Keep us, Father God. Bless us because no one can keep us like you can keep us. Stay the hand of the devil. There was thundering. There was lightning. And let me tell you, God has a way of thundering and lightning. He has a way of doing it. And nobody can do it like God can do it. God has a way of dealing with life and dealing with us. And anything can happen to us at any given time. And God will deal with it. Let me tell you, trust God to deal with it. Trust God to handle it. Pain, trust God to handle it. Suffering, trust God to handle it. Unemployment, trust God to handle it. God can make a way out of no way. There were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. There was a sea of glass like crystal. Let me tell you, when you see heaven, when you get, this is just a glimpse of heaven. John couldn't even put it in words because the reason why I know that John couldn't put it in words, as you read your Sunday school lesson, you will find out John says, and there was a number that no man can number. In other words, God, God has a way of doing things, and God is such a great God until man can't even put it in words. I'm going to tell you, eyes haven't seen. Ears haven't heard. What great things God has in store for those who trust him. Eyes haven't seen. You, have, you can't even imagine what God has in store for you. You have to reach heaven. You have to look forward to heaven. We have to look forward to leaving here. Stop wearing this world like a garment that you're going to keep on the rest of your life. Wear this world with a loose garment as a loose garment because you're going to have to get out of here. I'm telling you, you're going to have to leave here. If you don't leave in the rapture, you're going to leave here when the preacher says, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and earth to earth. You got to leave here. You have to leave. You got to go. I don't care. Look, I, I was looking the other day, and I saw somebody's birthday came up, and I knew they had gone away from here. I mean, that spoke volumes to me. It, it, it pops up, and it says, today is such and such birthday, and I know they got out of here. When you leave here, your Facebook page will be forever dormant. When you leave here, your Twitter account, boy, Donald Trump is really going to have a baby. When he leaves here, his Twitter account will be open no more. 
And it doesn't matter what you drive. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter if it's a gated community or a wide open community. You have to leave here. Get it in order now because you're going to get out of here. And we've learned already that it doesn't matter how old you are, you're going to leave here. You can be minding your own business and you're out of here. We got to get it in order. And so he says that the four living creatures was on each side. One had eyes. All of them had eyes in the front and in the back. Let me tell you, if you're going to see God, you just can't see him in one dimension. Right. If you're going to see God, you can't see him in one direction. If you're going to see God, you can't see him in, in, in one detour. If you're going to see God, you're going to have to make sure you look for him. The Bible says that great, these creatures had eyes in the front and in the back. And no, it's not like your mama did. When your mama said, what you doing in there? It looked like, it seems like that she had eyes in the front and the back. No, these had eyes in the front and the back. Yes, and they worship God. It says one had, had the body of a lion. It was like a lion, mean, meaning that it's the most powerful creature of all time. Let me just share with you the God we serve. He is the king of kings. The lion is the king of the jungle, but God is the king of kings. There's no king like our God. There's nobody like him. He is special. He is different. He stands alone. And then it says the next one was like an ox. This, this, this word ox means that they were given to sacrifice and service. He's given, I'm trying to paint you a picture of what heaven's going to look like. And what heaven looks like then ought to be what, what, what earth looks like for the church now. It was a, a period of sacrifice and service. We ought to be sacrificing something and serving the Lord without complaint. You know, people can sit on the sideline all day long and they can talk about, oh, that leader is not leading right. That person is not leading right. And that person is not dealing right. And that person is not handling right. But if you have the answer, it's time for you to lead. I remember, I remember in my, in my, my days of fighting at the, at the church, my days, you know, there are some days that, that the preacher has to come in and establish his way, and, and God has to make sure he creates some things around them to make sure that, that God has, has preeminence and to make sure the leadership is sealed. There was, there was a, a fighting day for me. The brother said to me, he said, man, you ain't said nothing to me for the last four years. He said to me, he said, your preacher has not touched me at all. I said, I tell you what, on Sunday, I'm going to announce you as a new preacher. I said, because I know you can do it better than I can do it. He said, now, now you, your demonstrations haven't touched me. Your preaching had not touched me. And I tell you what, I said, brother, I'm going to announce you. No, man, don't be praying with the church like that. I said, no, I'm going to announce you as a new preacher Sunday. He showed up at the church, left the communion stuff, and phew, disappeared because he thought I was crazy enough to do it. I mean, it just disappeared. Let me tell you, if you're going to criticize, you need to make sure you give forth sacrifice and service because at the end of the day, I know you can do it better. The, the ox represents sacrifice and service. And then there was one like the face of the man. The face of the man means that, that God had magnified himself. God had manifested himself, and God's presence is with the service of man. God is in our presence. God is, is with us. God is walking with us. He is in our presence, and because he's in our presence, he's among man, and when we have God on our side, we don't have to look a step further. He is God all by himself. Then he says the fourth one, like an eagle in flight. The eagle in flight, meaning that, that he, no adversities, no obstacles, can hinder the blessings of God. I'm just painting a picture of heaven. No obstacles, no burdens, no adversities can hinder the blessings of God. I'm telling you, we serve an awesome God. We serve an awesome God. He is awesome in every single way. He's God. And you got an issue. You're going to run to man with it. Let me tell you, leave men alone. Trust in God. Walk with him and, and talk with him and hang out with him and bless him. In verse number 8, it says these four living creatures had six wings within and without. 
These living creatures had six wings within and without, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night. Let me tell you, you got to get some rest on planet Earth. You, you can't go 24 hours a day and expect to have a healthy life. You have to get some rest on planet Earth. You have to get rest. But the text declares that these four living creatures did not rest day and night. Let me tell you, if you're lazy down here, you better get it together. <laughs> on the other side, when we reach heaven, when we get to God, we need to be worshiping him day and night. It says these creatures had, had six wings. Isaiah picks up this thought. Isaiah picks up this thought. Isaiah chapter 6. Uh, Isaiah says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord and I saw him like never before. I saw him high and lifted up. His train filled the temple. Isaiah said there were seraphims running around. There were angels present, and they, they had six wings. With two, they covered their feet. With two, they covered their faces. With two, they did fly. And preacher preached at one time, and man, he really was hooping, and the people just lost their wigs, their makeup, and their suits and everything. I mean, he was really preaching it, and he said, oh, Lord, when I get to heaven, I'm going to have six wings. So I was close enough to him, I thought, and I said, brother, the wings are, ser are for seraphims. The wings are for, for, for angels. The wings are not for us. He said, well, you know they liked it, didn't they? They showed you that they liked it, so I did it, and they did it, and they respond to it. That's extra biblical. That's not of God. Matter of fact, that's lying on God. What we need to understand, we don't need to worry about a wing. We don't need to worry about a limo. We don't need to worry about a jet because the Bible says when Jesus returned in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we're going to get out of here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We don't need wings. God has already fixed it up. And if we are dead, we don't have to worry about it because at the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise and those of us who remain will be caught up with him in midair. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The Bible says they did not cease day and night crying out, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who is, who was, who is, and is to come. They didn't cease. They didn't cease. Remember, Revelation is a futuristic lesson. Remember, revelation is going to take place. He says that the angels in heaven are crying out, holy, holy, holy. This word holy means that, that you are sacred, God. The word holy means we honor you, God. The word holy means we glorify you, God. We lift your name. That's why when we start our prayers, we ought to give God the glory. Give God the honor. Praise him for who he is and not for what he's done, just for who he is. No one exists like him. No one made him God. No one ushered him in as God. No one elected him as God. No one selected him as God. He just is God. He never will was be God. He always will be God because he always was God. And he will always be God. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Day and night, they never cease crying, holy, holy, holy. Day and night, they honor God. Let me tell you, we ought to honor him every moment we breathe. You know the reason why we still exist is so we can honor God? You know, we, we didn't lay down last night and didn't get up this morning. God giving us another chance to glorify him. And it doesn't matter if you're an introvert. doesn't matter if you're an extrovert. It doesn't matter if you're smooth, cool, calm, and collective. God wants you to honor him, and you need to honor him regardless of who you are, regardless of what you own, regardless of what you've been through. At your worst moment, at your best moment, at your in-between moment, you need to honor God because trouble is on his way to your house. You need to be honoring God. And when trouble gets there, God ought to be there, and God ought to be honored. <laughs> honor God. The angels don't cease. The living creatures don't cease. They, the seraphims don't cease hiring. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come. It says to us today that the God we serve ought to be glorified and honored 
in the present, in the past, and in the future. In the future, in the present, in the past. God, the God we serve ought to be glorified in us. We ought to glorify him. He, he's worthy. There is none worthy like our God. Verse 9 says, whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, something else happened. He says, when the four beastly creatures, the four living creatures, when they give glory, when they give honor, when they give thanks to the almighty God who sits on the throne and gives him a glory for he is for God forever and forever and forever and forever, something else happened. Guess what happened? The 24 elders fall down before him who sit on the throne and worship him who live forever and ever. Let me tell you, he, he, says, he says to us today, he says to us today that when the living creatures bow down and worship, then the 24 elders bow down and worship. We ought to worship God. We ought to, and let me tell you, what he's saying is, he's saying to us this morning, and that is that worship ought to be contagious. We ought to, we ought to get vibes from each other. I hear entertainers talking about Talking about getting vibes from the crowd and the energy from the crowd. Let me tell you, if we're going to worship God, we ought to worship him in unison. We ought to worship him on one accord. One lady was sitting in church, and, and she was just sitting there, and people all around her was up praising and, and worshiping God, and, and they were just. And so one, one deacon asked her, baby, what's going on with you? And she said, well, I'm worshiping God in my own way. Let me tell you, the text declares that we ought to join in with the worship. We ought to praise him. When the, when the music gets right, we ought to honor him. When the preaching gets tight, we ought to honor him. When repentance is on the table, we ought to honor him. God is to be worshipped and to be honored. It says, whenever the living creatures give glory, give honor, and thanksgiving, don't leave out thanksgiving. He says, you ought to thank him. You ought, you ought to thank him. You see, we've all been taught that it's, it, you never... Never supposed to receive something without saying thank you. God has blessed us again. And I just came today in front of y'all and hopefully that it becomes contagious just to say, Lord, I thank you. God, I glorify you. Lord, I magnify you. God, I thank you for who you are. I bless your name for what you do. God, I praise you. I honor you. I thank you, Lord. Lord, you are good. You are God. There is none like you. You are the great I am. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He says, when one gives thanks, everybody ought to give thanks. We ought to join in together and say, Lord, I thank you for another day. And they cast their crown before the throne. These golden crowns that they had on their head, they took them and cast them down, laid them down before the throne. It says to us this morning that, that we need to understand that, that regardless of what we have and regardless of the honor and the prestige we have, the God we serve is greater. And we ought to lay our crowns down. We ought to lay our burdens down. We ought to lay our prestige down to honor him. This is what's going on in heaven. In heaven, it says they took their golden crowns off, laid it down before him. And the 24 elders fell down. They fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. The God we serve lives forever and ever. He is the God eternal. He is the eternal God. He is the God who existed before there was a when or where. He is the God who walks with us and talks with us. He is the God that will exist from now on. He will never die. Let me tell you, when other people die, trust God. When people, when people have issues, trust God. When you have issues, trust God. And stop making folk feel like you have all the answers. It's okay to say, I don't know. But I know one who does know. He's the all-knowing God. 
And he watches over us. And he will never die. We ought to be writing letters to our, our young people right now. We ought to be we entertaining them and, and talking with them. We ought to be instructing young people right now and telling them, baby, your mama, your daddy ain't going to always be here. And this is how I want things to go when I'm gone. We, I want you to make sure you stay with the Lord. I want you to make sure you honor him regardless of what you go through. And as you honor him, God will give you favor. We need to remind our young people that we were once young and now we are old. But out of all our lives, we've never seen the righteous forsaken nor the seed begging for bread. We need to remind our young people, even at birth, that you need to understand that in all things, these things work together for the good. Everything works together for the good. To them that are called according to his purpose, those who love the Lord. We need to tell our young people, young people, you need to understand that God God can supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. We need to tell young people that God has a way of making a way out of no way. We need to tell young people that God has been my leaning post. God has been my bridge over troubled water. God is the one who keeps us and bless us. In the midst of foolishness, we need to remind them as I close with verse number 11. God is what? God is worthy. The God that we serve, he is worthy. We need to remind our young people that the angels in heaven are rejoicing because God is worthy. He's not a worthy God. He's the worthy God. The angels saying, you are worthy, O oh Lord. To receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. And by your will, they exist and were created. What if we could pass that message from one generation to the other? What if we were to tell people that the God we serve is the worthy God. We need to tell everybody we meet that the God we serve, he deserves honor. He deserves glory. For his is the power. For his is the glory. And his is the kingdom. We need to remind young people all over the world that God is worthy. When your ammunition won't come out, God is worthy. Just the other day when masked men walked into the church, somebody could have gotten dangerously hurt. Somebody could have moved the wrong way or somebody else in the, in the room could have been armed and they could have tried something. Let me tell you, God kept that church. God kept that pastor. And for that this morning, I don't know what they're doing this morning, but they ought to be down, bowing down before the Lord, saying, Lord, you are worthy. For, Lord, I give you glory. Lord, I give you honor. Lord, I give you praise. God, you're worthy. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you, God, for you are worthy. If you don't think you're worthy, just think back 2,000 years ago. On a hill far away, stood an old rugged cross on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross three men were crucified one died in sin one died from sin and the other one died for sin his name was Jesus God you worthy I was on my way to hell I had shackles on my hand cuffs on my feet I was on my way to hell but God made a way out of no way, mean men killed my Lord. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. On that hill he died. They took him off the cross, laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was a borrowed tomb. He got up early. I say he got up early. He got up early that third day morning with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He got up early 
that same Jesus got up before the rooster could grow. That same Jesus got up while the dew was yet on the ground. That same Jesus got up early that third day morning with all power, all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He got out of here, caught a cloud, sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for me. Every time I mess up and I confess my sin, I repent of my sin, he says, God, give him another chance. Don't kill him off right now. He's making intercessions for me. God, I died for him. I rose for him. He's making intercessions for me. That same Jesus at the trump of God. The apostle Paul says it like this. At the trump of God. At the voice of the archangel. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And those who remain will be caught up with us in midair. And we will forever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Thank God Almighty. For he is worthy of all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We adore you. We honor you, Father God, for your worth. You're worthy, Father. You've blessed us again. You've kept us in our right mind. We say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for when trouble was all around us, we didn't see it, we didn't feel it, but God, you kept us. You deserve the honor. You deserve the glory. You deserve the praise. Now, Father God, as we come to share the story of Jesus the Christ, we ask you to touch hearts, touch minds, give somebody the notion to give their lives to Jesus. We come, Father God, asking you, Father, to touch hearts for a decision to follow you. Lord, we thank you now. And we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. The door is open. The door is open. Will you trust Jesus as your Savior? Believing that he's the Son of God. That he died for your sins and he rose from the dead. If you never confess Christ as your Savior, this is your moment. Would you just bow your head with me and repeat after me? Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. Make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. We believe that if you honestly believe that death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and it takes that to get you to heaven, we believe now you are born again. We believe that you are born of the Spirit of God and you're on your way to heaven. And it doesn't matter if you die now or later, you're going to heaven. For those of you who are saved and know that you are, but for some reason or the other, you're still wrestling with sin like all of us are. I want to pray with you and pray for you. Father God, we ask you to bless us to be strengthened. Forgive us for our sins. And we repent of our sins. For those of you who are in between church homes, I don't have a church home or wrestling with the church home. I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the captain of the ship. Where Jesus 
is the main attraction where Jesus is the one that we worship. If you want to join the New Beginning Church, you can inbox us and let us know. If you're present in this room, you can come now. We believe that Jesus is leading us and guiding us. Thank you so much for joining us. One, we thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. I just want to tell you, God is worthy. He is. He is worthy. It is now time for tithes, offering, and sacrificial giving. It's time to give unto the Lord. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. The white and blue envelope is for tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. The white and red envelopes are for pastor's love offering. You can choose either one or you can choose both. Uh, raise your hand way up in the air and you will be served. You will be served. It's time to give unto the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.